three short days ago, the U.S. Air Force revealed the fact that U.S. fighter jets intercepted four Russian military aircraft which had entered Alaska's air defense identification zone. Specifically, according to a statement that was put out by NORAD, which is the North American Aerospace Defense Command, three days ago, a group of Russian bombers and Russian fighter jets entered Alaska's air defense identification zone. And as a response, the U.S. scrambled two American F-16s, two F-35s, as well as three other supporting aircraft in order to intercept the Russian planes, which they were able to do successfully. Now, there are several things worth highlighting here. The first is that if you appreciate content like this, I hope you smash those like and subscribe buttons, which forces the YouTube algorithm to share this video out to ever more people. Now, the second is that Alaska's air defense identification zone is not part of U.S. airspace. Rather, it's the zone that's immediately surrounding U.S. airspace, and within the zone, NORAD tracks as well as identifies any foreign aircraft. And what the Russians have been doing is that several times a year, they attempt to penetrate the zone in order to test the U.S.'s response. Essentially, the statement that was put out by NORAD said that this was just a routine incursion and nothing to worry about, given the fact that the Russians have been doing this recently six to seven times a year on average. Here's part of their statement, quote, NORAD has seen a yearly average of approximately six to seven intercepts of Russian military aircraft in the Alaskan Air Defense Identification Zone. These numbers have varied each year from as high as 15 to as low as zero. And the number of these incursions have been ramping up in recent years. I don't know if such a statement is supposed to be reassuring or more alarming. Regardless, it wasn't only the airspace surrounding Alaska. Because you see, on the very same day as this incursion, Joe Biden made the announcement that he will be traveling to Poland in order to mark the one-year anniversary of the Ukrainian war. And on that same day, the same day as that announcement, and the same day as the Alaska flyby, Russian jets were also intercepted as they were approaching Polish airspace. They were driven away from Poland by NATO fighter jets, but the statement has been made. Furthermore, it's not only Russia that's behind these so-called incursions. China has been making odd incursions into our airspace as well, and I'm not just talking about the balloon. You see, in late January, meaning in late last month, Japanese astronomers who were stationed in Hawaii noticed mysterious green laser beams that were being fired over the island. You can see a time-lapse video of these lasers on your screen for yourself. The laser beams are being shot down from space over top one of the largest mountain ranges in all of Hawaii. Now, initially, when they first reported these beams to the public, these astronomers said that they were coming from a NASA satellite, meaning that they were American lasers. But just a week later, a week after their initial statement, the Japanese astronomers issued a correction, saying that these green lasers were not from a U.S. satellite, but more likely they were from a Chinese satellite. Here was part of their correction statement. Quote, according to Dr. Anthony J. Martino, a NASA scientist working on America's Atlas satellite, it is not by their instrument, but by others. His colleagues, Dr. Alvaro Ivanov and others, did a simulation of the trajectory of satellites that have a similar instrument and found a most likely candidate to be the ACDL instrument by the Chinese Daki-1 AEMS satellite. Meaning that while it's not 100% confirmed as of yet, these NASA researchers traced the trajectories of all the different satellites in orbit who are equipped with such a laser, and they found that the Chinese satellite was the most likely culprit. It was the satellite whose onboard technology and trajectory through the sky matched up perfectly with what was seen on the ground. Now, the specific Chinese satellite in question here is called the Daki-1. It's a unique satellite that was launched in April of last year in order to supposedly monitor things like global carbon levels as well as atmospheric pollution. And according to the official statement from the Chinese comp company that manufactured it, this Chinese satellite has five different instruments on board in order to achieve this stated goal. And one of those instruments is something known as the ACDL, which stands for the Aerosol and Carbon Dioxide Detection LIDAR. And LIDAR is also an acronym, which stands for Laser Imaging, Detection, and Ranging. And so basically, this ACDL works a bit like sonar, but instead of sending out sound waves to map out an area, it instead sends out laser beams, green laser beams, to measure the gases in the environment, as well as to create a topographical profile of whatever the satellite is flying over. Here's how the Chinese corporation that actually manufactured the thing, here's how they described the Daki-1 and its capabilities. Quote, Daki-1 can monitor fine particle pollution like PM2.5, pollutant gases including nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and ozone, as well as carbon dioxide concentration. It combines both passive and active sensing, which can realize comprehensive monitoring of the atmospheric environment in a better way, according to a chief designer with the Shanghai Academy of Spaceflight Technology. Furthermore, and this is quite interesting, the statement goes on to say that this is just the first of many such satellites that they plan to launch. 
Quote, China will produce a series of docky satellites in the future, which will be used to monitor atmospheric pollution, provide remote sensing data support for environmental authorities, and also support scientific research into global climate change. Which, of course, all sounds well and good, but to be frank, it raises a very obvious question, which is, why would the Chinese government, which is responsible for some of the worst pollution on the entire planet, be suddenly sending out droves of satellites in order to monitor pollution levels all the way out in places like Hawaii. Here's in fact what the former chief of staff for the U.S. Marine Forces over in the Pacific said on this exact matter. Quote, why the Chinese, who are probably some of the most prolific polluters on the planet, would be collecting data on pollutants on this side of the Pacific? But this story actually gets a lot weirder and a lot deeper. Because in yesterday's episode of Facts Matter, we discussed a recent statement that came out from U.S. intelligence officials. And in that statement, they claimed to have been watching the Chinese spy balloon ever since it left the southern coast of China and began floating eastwards towards the islands of Guam and Hawaii. At that point, the U.S. intelligence officials claim that it's possible that the Chinese spy balloon was actually taken off course by the weather. Meaning that according to them, according to these U.S. intelligence officials, it's possible that the Chinese balloon was actually headed for Hawaii before getting knocked off course. Now, even though that is questionable, let's assume for a moment that it's true, that the Chinese balloon was indeed headed to the islands of Guam and Hawaii before being blown off course. And then also, let's assume for a moment that the Chinese Communist Party's official explanation is also true, that this was just a weather balloon. Well, in that case, here's the obvious next question. Why is the Chinese government all of a sudden so interested in the weather, the atmosphere, and the topography of Hawaii? Why are they sending balloons and sending satellites to monitor the skies over the Pacific island of Hawaii, which happens to be a U.S. state? Is it really that they are just so benevolent and they just want to make sure that our state in the Pacific is safe and sound? Or do they have an ulterior motive? Perhaps evidenced by the fact that when the U.S. military shot down and dissected the balloon, they found a bunch of spyware inside of it, including antennas and high-definition cameras. And how much are you willing to bet that if we happen to look inside of the Daki-1 Chinese satellite, Well, we would also find a bunch of technology that has nothing to do with tracking the atmosphere, but more to do with tracking movement of the U.S. military on the ground in Hawaii. And of course, according to the statement that we read earlier, the one from the China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation, the one who manufactured the satellite, they have explicit plans to launch more and more docky satellites in the near future. Meaning that perhaps as early as next year, you can look forward to seeing some green Chinese lasers in your own backyard. I'm sure the air quality will only get better. Unless, of course, you live in the great city of East Palestine, Ohio. If you'd like to go deeper into this story regarding these Chinese satellites, or if you'd like to read more about these Russian fighter jets incursions, I'll throw all those links down into the description box below this video. Furthermore, why do you think that the Chinese and Russians are doing this now? Do you think that they are seeing an opportune moment to expand their influence into the world? And if so, why? Please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll be reading them later today, as well as well into the week. And then lastly, let me show you this beautiful coin. This right here is an American Walking Liberty one ounce gold coin. And typically I order at least one of these from our sponsor, American Hartford Gold, every single month. The reason I do so is because, I mean, as you likely know, the inflation rate in this country is the highest that has been in, what, the last 40 years now? Everything like the price of food, the price of housing, the price of gas is absolutely going through the roof. And in fact, market experts like the CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase, he's not only predicting a recession, but he's even using words like unprecedented economic hurricane. And so listen, I absolutely do not give you any financial advice, but I would recommend that you do what I do, which is pick up the phone and call American Hartford Gold. Their super friendly staff can help you diversify your portfolio by either getting physical gold and physical silver delivered directly to your doorstep like I do, or deposited directly into your IRA and your 401k accounts They make the entire process super simple. And actually, besides me, they have an A plus rating with the Better Business Bureau with quite literally thousands of satisfied clients around the country. And best of all, to our viewers, to the viewers of Facts Matter, they are currently throwing in $2,500 worth of free silver on your first qualifying order. So giving them a call is an absolute no-brainer. So pick up the phone and call 866-242-2352. That's 866-242-2352. Or text ROMAN to 65532. Their link will also be down in the description box below. And then let's head on back to the studio. And then until next time, I'm your host, Roman from the Epic Times. Stay informed. Most importantly, stay free.